Good morning, welcome back to the channel. I might be the Raven, and today I am finally doing my movie review for the one and only Ginger Dead Man. One and only Ginger Dead Man. Everyone can be talking about the new Spider Man movie, but we're talking about the real movie here. I'm not gonna lie, I watched it in December. It's now Gingerbread Man and Christmas, but it's not a Christmas movie, so. On the bright side, you can watch this 2005 classic any time you want of the year. The movie was released by Full Moon Pictures, so puppets. There's, there's puppets in this movie. That seems to be a staple of them. I mean, any Full Moon picture I've watched has puppets in it. But anyways, this movie is basically child's play. But with Gary Busey and a gingerbread man. Sorry, ginger dead man. And that's all you really need to know to sell you on this movie. The movie opens up with Gary Busey, still human, robbing a dino because I guess he wanted 20 bucks from the register. And he's killing everyone in the process, including our main character, Sarah's family, who keeps trying to stand up to him one more. By one instead of charging him, I guess. I don't know. But, um, anyways, he tries to kill Sarah, but kind of finds himself unable to for no explained reason. But he decides to kill, anyways, to do what his mom taught him and finish what he started. And this is kind of where the movie lets me down because, like, I know it's a low budget movie and all, but like that's an interesting concept right there. Like that could be used for part of the reason why he's coming back from the dead is literally to finish what he starts and all that, but they don't really use it well. Kind of him not being able to kill Sarah makes no sense to the movie in my opinion because like he comes back to kill. But anyways, she survives and gives a testimony that Sentences him to death two years later, I believe. Just so you know and don't get confused, I'm going to start referring to Gary Busey's character as his actual name, Millard, or probably Ginger, that is what I'll be trying to use. But um, anyways, Millard has been sentenced to death. We get a little bit of like the context to some of this as Sarah reminisces over her brother wanting to go to a titty bar. Not even reminisces over the dad as much. It's just like, fuck him. Like, man, this is what the brother wanted to do. Anyways, getting back to the plot though of the movie. She discovers some gingerbread seasoning at the back door and a mysterious figure walking away. No red flags, despite the fact Rick, who I've seen, some people call him Brick. I don't think that's his name. I'm just going to go with Rick. Rick comes in with like the rest of the shit. And she's still like no red flags. Like oh I guess they, they just left this at the back door. And she immediately starts using it. This dumbass starts using it. Not only that though. But when Rick gets distracted talking about wrestling. And how he wants to be a... And in this corner, straight from Hale's Kitchen, the Butcher Baker. Rick cuts himself and bleeds into the mixer that they are, the mixture, whatever. He bleeds into this gingerbread dough that they're making. And yeah, they're, they're concerned about him, but they, they don't check the dough or, or anything. They're just like, yep, yeah, this is fine. Also, the blood going into it, I don't even know if that matters to the movie. Would he have came back if no one bled into it? That would have been a pretty weird requirement. It's a low-budget movie. They don't, We don't need to worry about the details. But we do have to worry about the rest of our main characters. And by main characters, I mean they just come throughout the movie. We get the real main characters later on for some reason. But we get her co-worker, Julia who gives us a little bit more exposition about how Millard's ashes were sent to his mom. And we get Sarah's mom, who is now a drunk, 
She's disheveled. She's shooting a gun at the competition's banner. And this is when we get a little bit more context about how the business is kind of going downhill. And this big business is going to put them out. And the owner, actually, we get to see a little bit. He wants to buy them out. So it's a nicer neighborhood for his place. And in the process, we get to meet his pageant daughter, who I never bothered to learn the name of. For no apparent reason, she has like a feud with Sarah and she goes and tries to get the bakery shut down because he's a, she's an asshole. And she leaves like trying to leave a rat and shit here. A food fight ensues with Sarah and eventually we meet her boyfriend, Almas? Almas? I don't know. But um, we meet him and he breaks it up and now we have our three main characters. I don't know why these are the three main characters chosen. I kind of like the ones we already have. As all this stuff with the fighting is going on, the ginger dead man rises. And our main characters just walk the fuck away from him. Go to the front of the store. They kind of talk about it. And they're finding basically any reason in this movie to not fucking leave. Like, I know he's such a booby trap later on in the movie in one part of the store. But, like, he's, like, eight inches tall. They could fucking leave. And, like, even if he comes after them, it's it's going to be a struggle. But, yeah, they try to confront the gingerbread man a little bit. We get a little bit more context on his relationship with the pageant girl. And a little bit backstory of how he actually knows Sarah. Charter friends, they kind of have a little bit of a love thing going on for no apparent reason in this movie. And eventually, the mom and Julia come back one by one. To get taken out by the ginger dead man. The movie continues on with some quips. Some hygiene from the ginger dead man. At times I feel like he's not shown enough. But I honestly gotta say. Sometimes is less is more with a character like this. He kills eventually the pageant girl's dad. Who comes after a phone call. He crashes a car into him. It's using a rolling pan by the way. To push the pedals. But not before we get one of my favorite things in this movie. Literally, the dad calls almost a tattooed punk. I don't remember the dude having any tattoos. So, but anyways, he's taken out. The pageant girl steals his ring for some reason and YOLO. She eventually dies in the movie and through the booby trap that I already mentioned. Our main characters also discover Julia has been decorated like a cake and left in a freezer. We get a little bit more of the love story and they eventually figure out that the ginger dead man is Millard coming back for revenge. In the midst of all this we also get Millard threatening a rat for no reason. And eventually they also discover that the mom has been left in the oven. They try to save her but not before the ginger dead man can now lock Sarah in there instead to try to get some ironic revenge against her. They get her out and he he fires a fucking gun which I find entertaining as fuck to see the ginger dead man with a gun. And then we see Rick come back to make the save. Dodging some bullets and shit. Taking the ginger dead man out of commission and then eating him. Got milk? Yeah the movie went there. They even had like some jelly filling or some shit for like the blood because it's a cookie. But yeah, this only leads though to Rick being possessed. They all thought things were good and dandy but then they had to fight the ginger dead possessed Rick who they then lock in a fucking oven. Like they don't, they just decide that he's like too far gone. After 30 seconds and just lock the dude in the oven and fucking kill their friend. Well, I guess almost won't fucking care, but like, Sarah, come on. I was actually kind of hoping that like, Ho and Rick would actually end up together. They, they would have been a cuter couple. They even hit at like, Julia and Rick, but then they're, no, they're just fucking killing Rick. For no reason. At least he seemingly got to live his wrestling dream before he died, but still. 
our uh, main characters all get like a happy ending for the living ones, like the bake shop because the competition never end, never opened. They are now thriving. The mom got her life together, and of course, Amos and Sarah got together. I don't, I don't get the couple in my opinion. The movie obviously is not that bad in my opinion. It's not. The best movie, but honestly, if this movie came out in the 80s or even the early 90s, I think it would have been a much more of a classic than it is. Like, if it came out, like, around the time of, like, the Killer Clown movies and all that, I do think this would have been a much more remembered movie. Obviously, some of the dialogue and some of the things in the movie aren't the best, but I actually found it a fun watch and I would be willing to watch it again and there is a lot more Ginger Dead Man to love because even though Gary Busey didn't continue on this movie inspired two sequels and I believe some comics so that's interesting that even though it didn't live up to the potential that probably a lot of people would think a movie has to live up to this movie it did get to be a, kind of a mini cult classic still. Of course, it had its cheesy stuff in it, but honestly, I'm a fan of the Ginger Dead Man. Though I should note I am biased. I do like all these like cheesy little horror movies. Even I enjoyed Thanks Killing, so maybe it's not for everyone, but I definitely enjoyed it. I enjoyed this movie so much that I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it 17 threatened rats out of 3 rolling pins. Hey you little shit! Fuck off! Do with that what you will. I might have been the raven. Make sure to like and subscribe down below. And make sure to have a good night. Let me know any suggestions for any other cheesy little horror movies you would like me to do a serious review for. I kind of enjoy watching these, so give me an excuse to watch these.